<laughs> so we're finally back from our vacation to New Zealand. Actually, we've been back for a couple of weeks now, but we did get distracted by the Nintendo Direct last week that we had to make a video for, blah, blah, blah. Don't worry because we haven't forgotten that we promised you guys a game hunting in New Zealand video. And here it is in all of its Kiwi glory, but we do feel like we have to warn you guys that while New Zealand has a lot of magical and amazing things to see, game stores aren't really one of them. <laughs> but while it was slim pickings, we did manage to find heaps of amazing things and spend way too much money like we usually do. Yeah, I could always do with some more money. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons. Let us know if you like these vloggy style videos. Honestly, it was heaps of fun to film and I can mm -hmm. see us doing more of them in the future. But I guess the first part of going to New Zealand is actually getting to New Zealand. So we caught the plane super late on the first night and it really didn't take me long to find something to add to the collection. So I'm pretty obsessed with these little nano block things. I've almost completed my evolution collection, but look at this one I found at the airport. It's a freaking beer. Need I say more? Beer good. <laughs> beer good. I like beer. I love beer. I like beer. You like beer? I love beer. Let's drink beer. Oh, beer. Okay. So the flight itself was pretty chill, nothing to really report there, except that I did really want to play in tabletop mode like they do on the ad. But turns out that you can't. Because once the switch is in flight mode, like it should be the whole time, then you can't use your wireless controllers anymore. So either the guy on the ad is being a naughty boy and hasn't got his switch in flight mode, or he's flat out lying to us. Thanks, Nintendo. Playing in handheld was really fun though. It was like one of those moments for me that really solidify why the Switch is my favorite console. Because no matter what game you're playing, whether it's like a really big game or a small game, you can play it wherever you go. Not like if you've got like a PlayStation and then you're restricted to playing phone games when you're out. But I would like to see somebody bring a PlayStation on a plane. So I think we did mention to you guys once before, but due to COVID and real world situations, it had been about four years since we'd gone back to New Zealand to see Laura's family. So it was far overdue and it did get a little bit emotional at the airport. But the tears didn't start because my sister saw me. She'd actually lost her Switch over Christmas and since I got the OLED, my old Switch had just been sitting around doing nothing. So I brought it for her, partly because I wanted to keep playing Animal Crossing with her, but also partly because we did have a mix up with the dates and she may have gone to the airport at 5am to pick us up the day before we got there. <laughs> but she only started crying when she saw the Switch. Yeah, she obviously missed us a lot, didn't she? Well, she obviously missed her switch more. I mean, fair enough. Yeah, I would probably do the same. So once we landed in New Zealand, we went straight to Laura's parents' holiday house in Otamatata. And we just soaked up the beautiful views for like a week and did classic Kiwi things. Like looked at all these sheep. Look at all these sheep, man. Look at them. And they're cute. They literally stopped traffic so these guys could cross the road. <laughs> it's like the most authentic Kiwi thing I've ever seen. I have like so many sheep jokes up here in the bank, but yeah, I'm not going to say them because I would be sleeping on the couch for like the next probably forever. Hmm. But of course, we also played some video games with Laura's family. Mario Party Superstars was a big one. It was actually Laura's mum's first ever experience with a video game. So that was pretty damn cool. But the big hit was What the Golf. If you guys haven't played this game, then please do yourselves a favor and pick it up. We are trying to work it into a video sometime in the future, but we will say for now that it's only 20 bucks on the eShop and I was actually crying while I was playing it. It is so funny. My mum literally woke up the next day and told me that I have this like hidden laugh that apparently I reserve for extra special funny occasions. So if What the Golf is good enough to unlock a hidden laugh mode within me, then it's obviously a pretty good game. But once we finally headed down south to Dunedin, the game hunting was on like Donkey Kong. 
but it wasn't actually that successful. Turns out there's like no game stores in Dunedin, but alas, Laura, Laura's brother Andy, and her sister Tess, as well as myself, all piled into her mum's car and went to GameStop, or AB Games as we call it in Australia and New Zealand. So I guess that was something, but we did go to this awesome weeb store where we were trying to search for this Waluigi body pillow from one of our friends. And Laura wants me to say that it was for the best that we didn't find it, but honestly, it's, it's a shame. <laughs> doesn't want a sexy Waluigi body pillow. It literally sounds cursed. <laughs> I did find this cute little Demon Slayer lanyard though, and a card capture Sakura case thing for my arcade card, because I'm a child and I keep losing it there. And then we got in trouble for filming at the arcade. So if this section gets cut out later, then that's why. This arcade trip was the first time we'd ever actually played Minecraft Dungeons. We always see it around and we actually own the game, but we've never given it a go. And it turns out it's like the best machine at the arcade now. It prints out these like little cards for you that equip to your character. And then you just smash through hordes of enemies with up to four players. So it was perfect for the four of us. And I think it might've actually finally inspired us to play Minecraft Dungeons on the Switch. Cause that thing has been sitting in our backlog for like, since it came out years, man. Years? I think so. At least one. Probably has been. Yeah. But after all that searching, it turned out that the best place to find games and dunners was actually my parents' house. Originally, I could only find the empty cases of all my old games, but eventually we did find the actual games in the basement, so enjoy this mini basement haul. All right, so we found these empty cases at my parents' house, much to my dismay. I was opening them up and I was like, no. It was pretty annoying. <laughs> it was pretty sad, but I mean, they've all got the books in them. That's pretty rare, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. No, for sure. I remember those days. But I did found, <laughs> I did find my actual old game case. So I haven't had a look through yet to see what games we've got. Hopefully they're in here. Ooh, nice selection. It is. All right, let's move these to okay, the side. Yeah, yeah. So your old DS. In there, but we do have Pokemon Ruby. Oh, is that a, that's a Pokemon Ruby right there. Yoshi's Island. Ooh. Super Mario Advance 3. Super Mario Advance. Crash Bandicoot. Ooh. Entranced. Oh, Crash Bandicoot 2, sorry. Pokemon Black. That's a good one. I actually don't even remember anything about this. Combat, combat of giants, dragons. It sounds cool. It does sound cool. I don't have any recollection whatsoever about it. So I wonder if it's <laughs> gonna be good. Um, Imagine figure skater. <laughs> this is actually a game I stole off my sister. Here's the Mario one. Here's this one. Hey. Mario, Donkey Kong. Perfect. Mini Land Mayhem. Perfect. Uh, two Harry Potter games, two Lego Harry Potter games. Are they the same? No. Oh, okay, that's good. Years one to four and five to seven. Yeah, too so bad we've like got those on Switch thick. already. We've got Spyro one. Oh, for the case. Yeah. Yeah, go on, chuck her in. Yeah, oh, nice. Perfect. That is satisfying. And boom, Animal Crossing. Right, let me zoom. I didn't really understand how to play it, but now that I've had all of my previous Animal Crossing experience with New Horizons, I'm sure I'll be able to know what to do. Figure so it out. So you got the one game you wanted to get. Yeah, I did. Which is perfect. Yep. Yay. I should have read the instruction booklet if I was so confused. Ah, back in the day when instruction booklets what I just think? like gave up, I remember. But you got it now. I've got it now. Yay! So we continued our search for video games once we got to the city of Christchurch. And once again, there's not really that much stuff here. But the selection is a little bit better than Dunedin. I mean, it's better than one GameStop. The EB Games, or the GameStop here, is way bigger than Dunner's. But we didn't grab anything because look at these prices. It's actually ridiculous, man. 
Honestly, I see Americans complaining about video game prices online all the time, but they have absolutely nothing on New Zealand. $130 for Gran Turismo 7? <laughs> nah, just nah. I did get a Tamagotchi though, which I was super excited about. I love these little things, but I'm pretty sure it's already dead because I forgot about it basically as soon as I got home. This is why I don't have any kids. I also developed an obsession for mini backpacks and Animal Crossing amiibo cards. I was specifically looking for Coco, the little biscuit rabbit with no eyes, but unfortunately I didn't find her yet. I did find Harvey though. So we really wanted to show you guys at least one video game store while we're in New Zealand. And we did manage to track down probably the only retro game store in the whole South Island of New Zealand. But when we got there, it was like this little back road in this like residential area. And we were like, this can not be it. I mean, look at this place. I don't think there would be any store here. But as it turns out, the store is literally in the back room of this guy's house. So awesome, man. It's called Appleby Games because it's on like Appleby Crescent or something. And it is probably the most unique game store I think I will ever go to. It was so amazing and weird at the same time. He had a massive collection of Wii games, PlayStation games, little bags, and this epic golem statue. Look at that. Look at it. It was pretty pricey, but honestly, games just are in New Zealand. And he was having trouble with a Pokemon Heart Gold cartridge that wouldn't work for him. So we gave it a little clean and we fixed it for him. So he gave us a discount. What a dude. <laughs> right? So I don't remember this guy's name, but for the purpose of this exercise, let's just call him Steve because I mean, Steve is like a nice guy's name. Anyways, Steve used to be a primary school teacher before the pandemic. And like many others, the pandemic hit him pretty hard emotionally and mentally. And he took a step back and just had a long, hard look at his life and was like, what am I doing? I love video games. I have this massive retro collection already. And then the New Zealand government was handing out grants to small businesses to try to get the economy going. And he was like, well, it's now or never. So he opened up a retro video game store in the back room of his house. What a dude, man. Like what a legend, how cool is that? I love a good success story. So if you are ever in Christchurch, don't call him Steve, but hit up Applebee Games and tell him some kind of gaming sent you, you will not be disappointed. Just look for this street that has no stores on it. Applebee Games was such a pleasant surprise and it was probably the highlight of our games hunt in general, to be honest. So we definitely recommend going and checking it out if you're ever in the area. And you know what they say, you should always end on a high note. So that's where we're gonna leave our little vlog to New Zealand video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. That is more than fine. But definitely let us know if you wanna see more of these like vloggy style videos, because again, they're really fun to make. Thank you so much for watching. If you're still here, don't forget to subscribe before you go and we'll see you next week. Bye. Peace. If I was a worm, would you still date me? <laughs> I mean, I guess if you just randomly turn into one. But you have to be like a sentient worm. A sentient worm. Yeah, I mean, you have to have your personality. If you just like turn into a worm and then you just like... Yeah, probably not. <laughs> but think about the possibilities.